Big news going around the TM Lights paddock is that Brinson Engineering has lost their primary sponsor, uh, who hasn't really been paying them ever since they started doing well, incidentally enough. They have p pulled the logos off the hood of the 25 car. Winning the Delano Pole Award in car number 45, Mariano Zavala, the Venezuelan, driving for Interline Motorsports, the first Venezuelan to win the pole. As you see here, Lane Cranston in the 14 car has got a big mechanical problem. Right off the bat in the pace lap, he pulled the 14 car into the pits, and Lane Cranston never took the green flag. Zavala gets a good jump on the rest of the field. Paul Lyons getting the two car, gets a terrible start. Jacob Card in the 15 car, in the Rick Milligan 15 car, holds the holding station. Oh, we got some silly, oh no, we got a big pile up on the main straight before everyone gets to turn one. More contact in turn one. I do believe got another car off. Uh, anyways, here's Jacob Eicholtz in the 31 as he moves over into Claire Alcier. Alcier doesn't give him any room. And, well, that's just silly, isn't it? As there's uh, Dan Richards, the 133 car into the wall as well. But Jacob Eicholtz is, uh, well, not exactly um, going to be on Claire Alcier's uh, Christmas card list at the end of this year. Anyways, as you see here, Cost Theodorcus got hooked and turned around by Calvin O'Reilly in the 67 car. And Matt Brinson in the 25 car drove off the track just so as he wouldn't pl uh, pile into anyone else. Good thinking there by uh, Brinson. As you see here, Jacob Card in turn three, lap one, gets around Mariano Zavala, and he assumes the lead of the race. Paul Lyons in the two car is going to try to follow him through in that uh, black and pink under construction car. Leah Cerrone, car number eight, has moved up into fifth. Cerrone has uh, really not been very impressive this year. The Brazilian has... Uh, Easily been the worst of the, of the three drivers that Lynx has uh, driving for them. However, uh, Cerrone has really turned it around this weekend. And in fact, uh, she qualified much better than Alcie and Ashley Tucker did. And, well, Alcie is already in trouble in her home race. And, well, Tucker's not having much uh, much better time out here. As you see, Bob Steffens getting a little poke from the one car of James Jones. He goes up the track, but uh, he's a little slow in rejoining. I wonder if he's got a problem. Whoa, whoa! That, look, that could have been a big pileup right there, but maybe it looks like there's problems with the 07 car. Joe Lennick in the 23 car gets into the back of Axel Andersson in the 4. Here comes Brooke Ingverson, and around goes Olenek. Uh, that was a little ambitious on the part of Brooke Ingverson, but uh, uh, then again, Joe Lennick was uh, kind of giving the 4 car, running to trying to bump the 4 car out of the way. I think, oh, actually, Elenic made contact with the four car first, hooked the four car, and, uh, well, he was going to send himself off to the left, and, uh, well, right into the end of the uh, 61, as we got Mariana Zavala and Darren Cardell making contact, Zavala moved over on Cardell, Cardell had none of that, and, uh, well then, Darren Cardell might be investigated for that after this one, but Zavala, big contact, and, uh, Oh, we got more. Oh, that's that's Washington turning around. Uh, the Archer Harris 79 car. Oh, whoa, Takumi Nagata, no brakes at all in the 64. And, oh, Azure into it again. Well, if Azure's luck couldn't get any worse, he wouldn't have any luck at all. And, uh, well, that's very unfortunate that 46 team. As a Zavala is really rather slow on track right now. Oh, contact with like Durbin, who just ran into him for no good reason. Dexter Hamlet piling into it as usual. And oh, what? why are people still crashing? There's the 51 car of Mike Andrews, who uh, got turned around by Quan Singh, who's really been uh, off the road more times than he's been on it all weekend. Paul Lyons has got a problem in the two car, and that problem might be Leah Cerrone, or that could be mechanical problems. Uh, and uh, I'm, I think... We're hoping that Lyons didn't just uh, have a rather catastrophic failure there, but it looks like he just made a mistake. Here's Jim Davidson in the 29 car, uh, who's been really making some headway. A little contact with Cardell. This 29 car's really been quick all weekend, and uh, he's really looking for a pretty good result here. There's lo looking a little uh, back here, and VJ Pushanda. He's running up in seventh, and he's been oh, he's had a terrible season so far, but um, worse than Leah Cerrone. And uh, he's uh, really turning it around this week. He's been fast. He's actually topped second practice. So there is uh, quite a bit of speed from the Indian driver who, uh, remember last year, drove for Scuderia Tutino and was arguably their best driver last year. Here's Costas Theodorakis in the three car. He's managed... Oh, whoa! Ike Durbin stopped in the middle of the track. And, oh, we're stacking him up again. Or maybe not. But, um... Well, uh, anyways. 
Got, uh, looks like uh, Friedrich Jaeger off course. Here's Ike Durbin dawdling in the middle of the racing line. Washington nowhere to go, but right into him. And Ike Durbin probably should pull off into the grass, and yeah, Theodoricus just piles right into the back of him. Doesn't make his situation any better. Ike Durbin uh, not exactly having the same kind of season he did last year. As uh, Leah Cerrone has got a bit of a train of cars behind her right now. As uh, Paul Lyons and the two cars going to go by. There's Joel Rodriguez, the Puerto Rican right there as well. Cerrone up, is up to second. Cerrone hanging on, though. Fastest, uh, fastest lap of the race is actually just turned last time by by Cameron Taylor in the 68 car. As uh, you see Cerrone beginning to pull away a bit from Lyons, gets a better exit off of three. There's Cameron Taylor. He's back in 18th place. He didn't qualify all that well, but he was very fast in practice. There are some people that were astonished that he didn't qualify in the top ten. But uh, Team Timothy is really, really uh, optimistic about this race. They're running the Master Cup race tomorrow. There's Rodriguez. Gets a little bit of a punt off the track. And, well, he's going to... Well, at least he's not making sandcastles because he can get that car out of the grass quite easily. But he's way far back now. Brooke Ingerson is running in 14th place in the Matthews Motorsport 61. Not entirely blameless in that uh, contact earlier with Joe Olenek, but not entirely her fault either. Got Daniel Melrose right behind her as well, but Daniel Melrose is in trouble. The Australian Mad Uncle Melrose is in trouble in the 73 car. He was looking forward to this one because... Uh, uh, he's been he's a quite an accomplished road racer formula a driver of note and melrose is gonna get a setback here his teammate darren cardell in the meantime is busy running into the back of somebody else darren cardell has not had any luck this year he's second to last in the championship but he's been very very fast and should have had multiple podiums by now here is the battle for the lead between jacob card and leah cerrone and I, this is the closest leah cerrone's come to the lead all season long if i'm not mistaken Regardless, Jacob Card holding off Cerrone. Cerrone's going to scoot right on by. It looks like Cerrone. Great move around the outside of Jacob Card. And Card, and that's 15 car, must have burned his tires off because he's really sliding around. The Canadian really wanted, wanting to impress in front of his, uh, well, the closest he's going to get to a home race. He's from the Toronto area. Paul Lyons in the two car right behind him. And, uh, well, it looks like they're all pitting together. TM Lights cars, they don't have the largest fuel cells, which does lead to scenarios like this, where you have TM Lights cars making pit stops very quickly. Uh, some people are, are, are guessing as many as four stops today. Uh, well, as you see, most of the field looked like they all pit in the same lap as uh, Jacob Card. In that 15 car is going to... Oh, Buffy Boreana is in there! And Card off! Jacob Card hooked and turned by uh, Buffy Boreanaz, who really, uh, yeah, Buffy just came in, hooked the left rear of the 15 car, had no intention of letting Card take the spot at all. Not very uh, sportsmanlike on the part of the 24 team for there for that one. A little further back in the pack, here's James Jones in the number one car, the same car that Troy Adams won the title in, gets hooked by uh, Robert Blake and... and Poor James, poor James Davidson's got uh, more damage to that 29 car. And uh, here's a battle for the lead right now between Viji Pushanda and Brandon LaRoe in the 33 car. Now, LaRoe's been pretty quick this weekend as well. Pushanda actually led a lap right there, but uh, now LaRoe's got it in this 33 car. They've got a new sponsor that's going to be coming on uh, for that 33 car soon, hopefully. As uh, now it looks like Pushanda's going to have to deal with it. Uh, his teammate Ike Durbin, who is not playing very nice. I don't really know why um, Ike Durbin isn't just moving over for him. He's way down. This track is over five miles long. A lot, a lot of long straightaways here. And uh, not exactly doing his team in any favors. As Cameron Taylor in the 68 car is really making some headway along with Han Young Sung in the 71. Han Young Sung has been dynamite on the, on the, on the big tracks on the larger ovals and clearly here as well so it looks like the longer the track the faster he is that doesn't seem to apply to just ovals but uh An Young sung the korean driver has uh really been on fire lately and uh there he is not here he is running a B vj pushana down he wants a podium spot and it looks like he's got a podium contending car there's gerald johnson getting hooked off the track by steve holiday jr new paint job on that 88 car you might have noticed but uh, he just escorted uh, Johnson off the track and into an early retirement. 
Friedrich Jaeger in, but he's way down the order along with Brandon LaRoe, Han Young Sung in the 71 car. Doing likewise, Ashley Tucker in the 12 car is having a pretty good run so far. As uh, you see, VJ Pushanda and Cameron Taylor staying out just a little bit longer, and they clearly are throwing the dice, and hopefully it'll work out for the two of them. Cameron Taylor in that 68 car, though, just absolutely flying through this field right now. There are a lot of people that are surprised that he didn't get a Master Cup drive uh, because of his impressive performances last year. Oh, LaRoe into the back of the 12 car, Tucker. And Tucker off the road. Ashley Tucker did exit very slowly over there, but uh, the 33 car just punted Tucker off the track. Leah Cerrone in the 8 car uh, is going to... Oh, Cerrone hooks the 16 car Thurston Blood off the track. I think to be fair, though, I think Thurston Blood uh, ran that turn a bit wide, but Cerrone uh, didn't have any of that. Cameron Taylor is uh, running up in second now. He's got, uh, there's a 73 car. Looks like Melrose did rejoin, but he was in the pits for quite a long time. Quan Singh right here is in uh, 17th. Claire Alsey is still running. It's, and Alsey running in the back of Mark Blackwell in the other unit 11 car and around goes the 59 and oh, Mike Andrews into him. Into the side and over goes the 59 car in a spectacular series of rolls. Ironically enough, Singh punted the 51 car in the first lap. 33 car is still leading the race. Uh, Brandon LaRoe in this 33 car is really, uh, the, the couple of laps that he's been out in the lead, he hasn't really had any problems. But uh, granted, he has, he's spent quite a bit of time in the lead, but uh, remember, these cars are lapping very slowly around this track. So, uh, well, anyways, there's been a lot of speculation lately that the uh, TM Lights cars could use the same fuel cells, Master Cup Series cars, soon. And uh, this race, I think, might be why. As you see, Cameron Taylor staying out to lead another lap in that 68 car. Vijay Pushanda, though, appears to be uh, leading quite a few laps here due to uh, pit strategy here. As he's right now in second. Bobby Dollar running in 10th place has run here on many different occasions. There's been some speculation that Black Diamond Racing might put him in the 44 car, which is their third car in the Master Cup Series side of things for uh, Road America, where... Of course, Bobby Dollar does have a fair bit of experience, so uh, they might put him in the, in the car for that race and might give Paul Lyons another go uh, later on in the year. As I mentioned earlier, Matt Brinson's team has been having some sponsor troubles, uh, and interestingly enough, once they started getting uh, very fast, that sponsor stopped paying. And he's running up in the top 10, and uh, this 25 car has been having a pretty solid day, and oh, there's Darren Cardell, and the round... There's got to be about 25 different people that Darren Cardell's run into today. Whether it's on purpose or not makes no difference. Uh, Darren Cardell has um, really just... I, I think Cardell might just be getting fed up of the amount of uh, bad luck he's been having and is now just resorting to running into people. Well, uh, I have a feeling Cardell might be seeing uh, the stewards after this one for a little um, chat. Brandon LaRoe is leading the race. Cameron Taylor is second. Third is Vijay Pushanda, and Han Young Sung is sitting back and forth. Cameron Taylor in that 68 car is gaining quite a bit of ground on this 33 car. He's staying out again, uh, running long on this pit stop, on this pit cycle, and uh, he's gaining quite a bit of ground this way. There's been some speculation actually that Team Timothy might change the paint job on the 68 car, which I think would be a little bit of a travesty, uh, especially if they bring back what they had last year. Uh, here is the uh, 18 car of EJ Pushanda trying to hold off the uh, 71 of Han Young Sung. Pushanda uh, led, has led quite a few laps already in this race. Usually when other people are pitting, uh, he's been able to stay out quite a bit longer. He's uh, not exactly playing the usual strategy here. There's the 33 car in. Brandon LaRoe. Here's the 68 staying out once again. Cameron Taylor throwing the dice along with, I think, the 18 car. The 18 car should be staying out as well. VJ Pushanda in the Great Lakes Motorsports car. There's the uh, Cameron Taylor car. He's going to be running the round of Ohio, uh, we believe, with Team Timothy. There is a Calvin O'Reilly back in 20th place. Uh, the, 60, the car number 67. There, we've actually mistaken O'Reilly. Oh, O'Reilly got punted by uh, Robert Blake there because Blake was getting held up, but we've actually mistaken Taylor's car for O'Reilly's car on quite a few occasions. They do look very similar, so Team Timothy was actually thinking about changing the paint job on that car as Cameron Taylor pits. 
comes out and we got a couple of cars right behind him and I do believe Cameron Taylor is going to be leading this race. Uh, there is Brandon LaRoe. Yes, Cameron Taylor has taken over the lead. Confirmation of that. There's Azure in the uh, 46 car. Uh, he hasn't had any luck at all, but you notice James Davidson being, uh, Jim Davidson, sorry, being a very, very polite backmarker. Cameron Taylor now being reeled in by Brandon LaRoe, who has uh, finally gotten his tires up to temperature. And uh, whereas Cameron Taylor running a bit more conservatively right now, that's going to come back late in the run as Taylor tries to pinch him off. LaRoe on the inside, and it looks like LaRoe is going to take the lead back. So the 33 car back on point. And uh, there he goes back into the lead of the race. And here is the 33 car into the pits once again. Uh, right, right after that lap. So there's Cameron Taylor in as well. So Taylor pits with Brandon LaRoe now. So it looks like Taylor is uh, throwing the dice a little differently. He's going to be on the, trying to be on the same pit strategy as his main rival. Both these, both these guys now are way behind Vijay Pushanda in the 18 car. But as you see, there's the gap. Cameron Taylor... Uh, uh, a little behind Brandon LaRoe and uh, LaRoe in the 33 car going around the uh, there's a Chip Stefano car on the inside the 426 car driven by Yafali and Emiya. Uh VG Pushanda is actually way out in the lead right now but these two are good this is going to end up being the battle for the win it looks like between Brandon LaRoe and Cameron Taylor unless something else happens uh, last time by LaRoe not quite not that much quicker than Cameron Taylor but Cameron Taylor Really reeled him in in the next couple of in the last couple of laps, and we've got a real battle for the win in our hands. This is the final lap of the race as Cameron Taylor, as they come through turn two, coming down into turn three. Is Cameron Taylor is he going to be able to get it done here? He makes a move. He's got it. Something going on in the exit of three, and he might get it. Laro did not quite get as good of an exit off of three. He was too busy defending early, and Cameron Taylor is going to go by. Cameron Taylor trying to hang on as LaRoe trying to fight back. He's got a couple more chances to do it. And the 68 car. Cameron Taylor now trying to hold him off again. LaRoe gives him a shot. Is that going to get leave the door wide open? It looks like it. Cameron Taylor's going to have to defend it. LaRoe coming through on the inside. No, doesn't quite have enough there. Cameron Taylor hangs on to the lead. So far, doesn't have too many more corners to go. But he's got, uh, but LaRoe still may have a couple of chances here. But Cameron Taylor in that 68 car, hanging on, pulling away with one corner to go. Cameron Taylor in the Team Timothy, number 68. This is a Canadian team with an Ohio driver. Cameron Taylor comes down to take his first TM Lights win of the season and a signal that he is clearly back on top form. Cameron Taylor wins the race over Brandon LaRoe, came in second. Both drivers led four laps. VG Pushanda led eight. However, like I said earlier, that was largely due to when other people were pitting and he was staying out. Bobby Dollar, Bob Steffens, good recovery for the 07 team. They ended up throwing the dice after they ran into problems early. Han Young Sung in the gravity car. Rodriguez, Hamlet, Blackwell, and Richards round at the top 10. And Richards ran into trouble on lap one before he even made it to the first corner. So good job by the EV racing team to really uh, correct that mistake. Brooke Ingerson, the 61. He was meeting with race control, we believe, after the end of after the end of this race. Matt Brinson, decent recovery there. Scott Washington, uh, Leah Cerrone, who dropped through the field very quickly. Alcie after and Alcie and Eichold, who I don't think are on speaking terms after this one. Holiday Jr., Blake, Melrose, and Davidson rounded out the points. Winning the Delano Pole Award for the TM Lights race at Ohio Motor Speedway, Claire Aussier, the French-Canadian, in the number 11, links women's team Gessler. Her teammate Ashley Tucker in the 12 is on the outside of the front row. Then you got Jacob Eicholtz and Dan Richards, the ASCC champion. And then on row 3, you've got Joe Olenek in the TARDIS 23, and Scott Washington in Alex Harrison's zero car. There you see the 11 car, though, of Aussier trying to pull away quickly. aussier has been very, very fast all weekend long. Uh, Joe Olenek in the 23 car, the TARDIS 23, trying to impress in front of the TM Master Cup Series team owners, all of whom are here this weekend. Uh, so Olenek trying to do something, trying to get his name out there, along with Ashley Tucker in the 12. Uh, winning in front of the Master Cup team owners at Darlington certainly helped her, her, her case. Uh, but uh, Tucker, I think, was looking more out of her performance at Quebec. But now we're back here to a short oval, and we'll see how Tucker is able to do today. Alcie, on the other hand, 
is pulling away from the field quite easily. Uh, I'll see in this 11 car uh, led first practice and second practice as well. So uh, it really looks like Alcia might have an easy time with things. Leah Cerrone, the third car in the Lynx women's team, uh, really uh, has not been on her teammates' pace all weekend long. Steve Holiday Jr. in fourth. In well, thankfully they kept that paint job for uh, this race too. Uh, for a minute, uh, we were all getting worried that that was just a one-off paint job, and that the uh, hideous car they had earlier would return. Dan Richards, the 133 car, tags the wall after uh, he got tagged by the zero of Scott Washington. So eight laps in, and we're under caution. Well, some people are predicting a repeat of what we had last season, which was a race of very high attrition. As Costas Theodoricus and the three car pulls into the pits, he's got smoke coming out of the back of that car, uh, we believe. So, anyways, Claire Alcier leads on the restart. Dan Richards uh, had a long pit stop to repair damage. A couple other people had very slow pits, uh, pit stops as well. Alcier in the 11. Whoa, Ike Durbin. He's a lap down, trying to get his lap back. Alcier though, I nearly visited the fence because of Ike Durbin, and Ike Durbin wasn't exactly very, uh, very, uh, a little friendly at, uh, well, as you remember, at Road Gatineau. Here is Steve Holiday Jr. trying to battle with Takumi Nagata for position, and Archer Harris in the 79 car pits, uh, while the rest of the field was, uh, well, during that last shot there, so the 79, the second Rick Milligan car not having a very good day, again. Here is Claire Alcier, though, in the 11. Got a couple lap cars in between her and second place, and I think that'll definitely play to her advantage. Oh, here we got three wide here in a flat oval like this. This, uh, this could end in tears very quickly. That's Calvin O'Reiler in the middle in that uh, 67 car. Getting, uh, he's gotten the inside Thurston Blood, the uh, series champion from him two years ago. Dan Richards is a lap down on the outside. Uh, Friedrich Jaeger coming into play in the Eagler 96. There's a Lennox, and, the, and right in the middle, there's Mike Andrews in the 51, uh, who won the pole for this race, if I remember rightly, last year. Trying to look on the inside, but no, nothing there. Mike Andrews having a disaster of a year so far in that 51. Here's Leah Cerrone in the 8 car, trying to claw her way through the field, along with that 46 car of Azure, who's, um, really, I think he just, Azure, I think, just wants a race where nothing bad happens, and I think then he might actually get uh, some more points. Here's Axel Andersson, car number four. Uh, he is uh, a serious threat in the title race. He's running back in 12th, and uh, he hasn't won a race yet this year, but he has certainly been a very, very steady competitor out there this year in that four car. Uh, so he could definitely be a uh, very serious... Oh, and he saw Joel Rodriguez making a dive bomb. Got out of the way quickly because, uh, well, I'm pretty sure Leonard Rotter could tell... Um, I'm all about that. Even though that team is actually managed by Leonard Roderick's father, Barrett Roderick, or Barry as everyone prefers to call him, but uh, anyways, Dexter Hamlet running up in fifth place has not crashed into anything yet, and uh, the 73 car is Mad Uncle Daniel Melrose is running up in sixth, and uh, Melrose has really taken to the short ovals very, very well. Uh, both the Melrose Racing Team cars are running uh, tomorrow's Master Cup Series race, so uh, MRT is doing the double duty here, and it's paying off, it looks like, as the 133 car of uh, Dan Richards, not exactly uh, the most courteous of back markers until, well, uh, Alcia makes a move on him. So, uh, so Richards uh, continuing to kind of get in people's way, looking back at Leah Cerrone following Darren Cardell to, towards the front, and Cerrone in this eight car, uh, really, there's a lot of people wondering whether or not uh, she really deserves to be in this series, but... Um, Regardless, she's not doing a terrible job um, today. And here is Ike Durbin in the 08 car, and Jacob Eicholtz in that 31 is back in second, and neither Durbin or the 59 of Juan Singh getting out of the way. And here is the 133 car of Dan Richards, and he's a little, he's slow. He's trying to get out of everyone's way, but uh, the problem is around short ovals when you have a lot of lap traffic is that oftentimes they, they don't exactly have the opportunity to get out of the way in time. And uh, Ike Durbin in the 08 car has now been forced to the outside. Uh, the 31 of Ike Holtz has still got to deal with another lap car, that being the 59. But as you see right there, uh, just battling with the 08 car has cost him quite a bit of time to Claire Alcier. Alcier backing it down just a little bit because we actually have a long green run going here. Much to our surprise, I was expecting this to be a caution-filled race. 
Robert Blake in the seven car. He's got some problems there. He's gonna pull that car off the track and surprisingly does not draw a caution. Dan Richards in the 133 car pitted. Now he's the fastest car in the track because, uh, well, everyone stay has been staying out just to avoid getting caught out when there's a yellow. There's the seven car. Uh, it was off to the inside there. Uh, Robert Blake in this in the seven car pulled uh, pulled that car off track. No yellow, surprisingly, they got him off track before uh, that was uh, the case. But anyways, Richards is faster than the leader. Uh, not exactly uh, wanting to play nice there as he's try trying to unlap himself, trying to get himself back in this race. Buffy Boriana is back and forth in this 24 car. Uh, really rebounding from that messy week she had up at Road Gatineau. But uh, trying to have a better week of things here as uh, here's Claire Housey in the 11 car. Uh, holding off Archer Harris. I don't think that's a car she expected to be racing with. But Harris uh, is a couple laps down, trying to get one of them back. And I'll see you trying not to let him in, because if she lets him in, then that's going to give Eicholtz in the 31 a shot at the lead. And there's Eicholtz trying to get a... Uh, no, I'll see you lets the 79 in and, sl and shuts the door on him. So Eicholtz going to have to find another way by. And uh, he might have that opportunity here. But with the 11 car and the 31 pit at the same time, but we've got contact right behind them as Robert Blake has rejoined the race, gets into Leah Cerrone, who gets in... Oh, no, not Azure. Oh, well, well, Azure got into a, into a crash, not of his own doing again. Seems to be a magnet for disaster this season, the 46 team. But that's going to trap Claire Alcier in the pit lane, we thought. But since Alcier came in before the yellow was drawn, well... Uh, they didn't need to, they didn't bring the 11 car in again, and she cycled through back to the lead with Jacob Eicholtz in second. So, lucky, lucky break for Claire Alcier and Jacob Eicholtz. Kwon Singh pitted, oh, oh, come on! He pitted before, while the rest of the field uh, was getting the one to go, pulled out right in front of a couple other cars. That just looked really, really stupid. And let's see it again, and, oh, as you see right here, it looks pretty much the same thing there's an apron there that I think he probably should have used because he was several laps down and wadded a couple of cars up there that had no business being in any kind of crash uh, especially one that I think uh, he could have uh, that he could have solved if he was paying the slightest bit of attention anyways I'll see now having to deal with more traffic there goes Ashley Tucker in the 12 who I who is way back Tucker's kind of disappeared uh, down the uh, down the order as uh, Alcier in the 11 car, now having to deal with a lot of uh, lap traffic. Eicholt is having to deal with it as well. But um, a car that Alcier might have to be aware of coming through the field is right, you can see him right in the background of the shot, the 14 of Lane Cranston. Cranston is using this lap traffic to his advantage. He's going for the lead right now. Lane Cranston says, move over. Here I come. And uh, Middle Tennessee Motorsports is going to the lead with Lane Cranston as he's three wide with Claire Alcee and the lap car of Dan Richards. And I'm pretty sure Claire Alcee is not going to have anything nice to say about Dan Richards at the end of today. Um, as Lane Cranston moves into the lead of the race, Alcee slides it up the track. Although I think Alcee might be looking in her mirror trying not to get destroyed by the 133 car who is all over the track. Oh, geez, Dan Richards is not giving Alcee anything but migraines right now. Han Young Sung in the 71 car has also had a also had a pretty good restart, and he's now up to fifth place. He is marching his way to the front of the field. Oh, as Takumi Nagata slides into the 71, that could have been a big wreck right there. Archer Harris in the 79 is thankful that it wasn't a big crash. Kevin O'Reilly there in the uh, 67. There's Quan Singh, Brandon Laurel on the inside of the 71, but he's he's holding them off. It's a pretty, uh, they got that car hooked up. Is Oh, Jacob Eicholtz gets to go with Bobby Dollar, and that's the same thing I have to say about what happened with Quan Singh. I think uh, not paying attention caused that one. Lane Cranston leads, Buffy Boriana second, Claire Alcier third on this restart. Cranston in this 14 car. Uh, doesn't look like anyone really has anything for him as soon as, uh, as, soon as a run kind of settles in. And, uh, but I would like to point out, though, that under that caution, he didn't pit. Everyone else in the lead lap did. Uh, I didn't, uh, so Lane Cranston might be pushing it on fuel. So, uh, I don't think fuel will be a concern here. This track is, 
as, like I said, this is the smallest track on the circuit, but Lane Cranston it might be playing with fire here. There's Claire Alcier back in uh, back in third. There's uh, Buffy Boreanaz in car number 24. James Jones is also making some headway through the field in car number one. He's uh, gotten around Buffy, and uh, there's oh, there's the uh, 426 car coming in. Uh, the Annie Mia car enters the pit lane. But James Jones really uh, showing some of the magic that Troy Adams showed with this car. So Down Under Motorsports might get a second Australian a TM Lights title at this rate if he keeps things going. Here is car number 14, Lane Cranston, who, uh, uh no, he's, he's sputtering, I think. The 14 car just might be uh, sputtering on fuel. Lane Cranston's going to have to pit with just two laps to go. That's less than a mile left on this. Can you believe it? Lane Cranston in trouble. And what's going to happen there? James Jones takes over the lead, but same thing befalls the one car. So he... He runs low on fuel, and that means that Han Yong Sung in the 71 car assumes the lead of the race. And Han Yong Sung, the Korean driver, has, uh, his, he's pretty, he's good to go on fuel. Uh, I think people were expecting some more cautions before this one was over, and that didn't happen. And Han Yong Sung comes through and steals the victory in the 71 car for Gravity Racing in that team's home race. Leah Cerrone and Claire Alcier completed the podium. Leah Cerrone in that eight car, uh, made it work on strategy. Axel Andersen did as well. Jacob Eicholtz recovered. Joel Rodriguez, Thurston Blood, Mad Uncle Melrose, Steve Holliday Jr., and Friedrich Jaeger rounded out the top ten. Paul Lyons, Brooke Ingerson, Cameron Taylor uh, makes it work here in uh, his home race. He was supposed to be running the Master Cup race tomorrow with Team Timothy. He'll do that instead in a Manicor engineering car. Daxter Hamlet in the 54 car. Matt Brinson, the Brinson Engineering car, more points for him. Bob Steffens in, in uh, that team's home race. Mark Blackwell, Jacob Carr, Jim Davidson, and Scott Washington round out, round out the points in what was a surprisingly clean event today. And let's have a look at the TM Lights Championship. After 11 races, Axel Andersen still leads by four points. Han Young Sung, however, with his first win, moves up into third. Bobby Dollar, Claire Alcier, Matt Brinson, the top six in the championship. Brinson uh, still has the pace. He's just falling away a little bit, but I wouldn't count him out just yet. Paul Lyons, Leah Cerrone, Steve Holliday Jr., and Friedrich Jaeger round out the top ten in the championship. Jim Davidson sitting back there on 11th. He's had a pretty solid year. Ashley Tucker, Scott Washington, Brooke Ingerson uh, might be a little higher if she hadn't gotten hit with a couple of penalties earlier in the year. Jacob Card, Buffy Boreanaz. Jacob Eicholtz is really beginning to turn things around. Ike Durbin really has sort of fallen off um, as of late. James Jones in car number one has had quite a few strong results lately in uh, that car number one. Wouldn't be surprised if he won a race before this year's out. Bob Steffens in the 07 car rounds out the top 20 in the championship. The TM Lights will once again run with the Master Cup Series cars next time out, and it will be at the Grand Detour of Western Illinois in Quincy.